Church family and welcome. We're so glad you're joining us today. It's going to be an awesome day. Hey, if you wouldn't mind in the chat or the comments there, put your name and where you're watching from. We love to see that, love to connect with you. Um, hey, if we haven't met before, my name is Julie Crook. This is my husband, Val. We serve on the communications dream team here at Heartland Church. <laughs> hey, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, man. I'm so excited. Today is Baptism Sunday. If you haven't ever been here, let me tell you something. What an awesome experience. Um, I had the pleasure of being in the tank this morning, and so I'm, I'm still taken aback. But one of the things I absolutely have loved is this past uh, 21 days of prayer. I call it 21 DOP. And so it has been just a tremendous blessing. I know that God has been answering your your prayers as you listen online. He's been answering my prayers and our prayers. And so, man, let's continue to dig in past this 21 days to seek him first. Yes, that's awesome. Um, you know, there's so much going on here um, at Heartland for the new year, 2024. Um, you know what? The best thing to do is to text NEWS to 68000 so you don't miss anything. We have men's breakfast coming up. That's a new thing they're having. That's going to be February 2nd. I'm Absolutely. sure you're going to be at that. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, also, Married Night Out is coming up near the end of the month. We will be there. That's we our go thing. There. Um, we go to it every time. It's so nice to just leave the kids at home, have a night out with each other and just with other church couples and just enjoying a great time together. And you know what? Small groups also are starting up um, very soon as well. So registration still open. You want to get in a small group. That's an awesome way to connect with each other. So again, just text NEWS to 68000. Then you can see all that's going on here. Oh my goodness, if you have not connected with a small group yet, I mean, I am telling you what a great way to be in community, to build community. There are freedom groups. There's a group for about everything. And so uh, if you're not in a group or if you want to launch a group, definitely text to 68,000 so that you can get that squared away. So I said earlier it was all about Baptism Sunday. Today is Baptism yes. Sunday. If you are at home and you're watching this and you want to get baptized at the next service, come on in and hang out with us. What a great opportunity. Yes, that would be great. If you're close, come on in. That would be perfect. Hey, we are a praying church. We love to pray for you. Um, if you would like to put your prayer requests um, so we know what they are, go to Heart heartlandchurch.com slash prayer and on that prayer wall you can put them there and we would just love to cover you in prayer that'd be such an honor for us that would be a tremendous blessing but right now let's just get ready to head right into worship <laughs> to Jesus' name. If you've 
happy about that this morning after everything that we did he's still in love with us he loves us so much and there may be a person in the room this morning who who walked in feeling unworthy of Jesus's love this morning because the weight of what you did is so heavy on your shoulders we want to encourage you God is not upset with you because of what you did listen he's not upset with you because of what you did as a matter of fact, God is more concerned with the person that we are becoming than anything that we ever did or anything that we ever could do. So we're going to sing this next song. And if that message was for you, I want you to just lift your hands up, close your eyes, and just receive the love of Jesus this morning. It's an unconditional love. It's a love that's not keeping account of every sin that we commit. He loves us so much. Let's put our trust in Him today, amen? Blessed assurance Jesus is mine He's been my fourth man in the fire Time after time Born of His Washed in his blood And what he did for me on Calvary Is more than enough 
answered. I sought the Lord. Sing it out. And he heard, and he answered. Sing it out. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why. One more time. One more time. Sing it out. I sought the Lord. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anytime we need something from you, anytime we need something from you, all we have to do is ask and you will answer. We thank you for being a prayer answering God. We thank you for being a God who always is there and always provides. And so we come to you now, we open in our hearts and we hold nothing back. Have your way in this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Listen, we're so excited. It's Baptism Sunday, everybody. If you have some room on your rows this morning, please scoot to the middle uh, so that we can make room for the people who are still coming in. I appreciate that. We're going to have a wonderful service. Please find a couple people that you haven't spoken to. Give them a high five and say good morning. What's up, Heartland? My name is Alonzo, and I'm so glad you made it here today. Before we get into the message, I'd like to share a few things with you that we're looking forward to. We know it's not an accident that you're here today, and we'd love to be part of your journey. The easiest way to get connected is to fill out a connection card. You can find it in the seat back in front of you or by selecting the link in the chat. If you're new to Heartland or to following Jesus, we would love to give you a free devotional book written by our very own Pastor Darren. Just bring your connection card to the welcome desk in the lobby or write to us at info at heartlandchurch.com. Our spring small group semester starts next week, so go check out our online directory. No matter what season you're in, there is a group just for you. Also, if you'd like to lead or co-lead a group for the first time, we still have training sessions at 11.30 a.m. today and next Sunday. You can text groups to 68,000 to learn more, and we pray this spring is your best one yet. Hey students, next Sunday, spring student small groups begin. Sign up to join a student group on the directory by texting groups to 68,000. We also have a special student small group hangout coming up next Sunday. For anyone that is in seventh through 12th grade, we will hang out and have lunch together in the kitchen from 12.45 to two. We can't wait to see you there. Men of Heartland, don't forget that this Friday, February 2nd is our first ever men's breakfast. We'll have it right here at Heartland starting at 6.30 a.m. and you'll enjoy a delicious breakfast, an inspiring speaker, and an encouraging fellowship with other men. There's limited space, so make sure to register today by texting MEN to 68000. Now couples, listen up. Our annual Married Night Out is coming up on Friday, February 23rd, and we've got an awesome night in store for you. We'll have guest pastors Aaron and Adrian Lindsay coming to share with us. And the evening is sure to be full of encouragement, fellowship, and laughter. So if you're engaged or married, make sure to sign up today since the registration deadline is February 18th. Just text MNO to 68000 and we look forward to seeing you there. Again, we're so happy that you're here today and we pray God's blessings over you. Today is going to be a great day. Yes, it is. It's going to be a great day, everybody. Good to see you. Welcome. Come on, help me welcome everybody who's joining us online. So glad you're with us. Hey, if this is your first time here, my name is Darren Shesky. I'm the pastor here, and I'm so grateful that you're a part of church today, and we're glad to have you in our house. It's Baptism Sunday. It's just an inspiring day, and we just finished the 21 days of prayer. Y'all are amazing. Every day, 6 a.m., Saturdays at 9 a.m., we met and we prayed and uh, what an incredible day we had yesterday. Anybody a part of that final 21, of, 21 days of prayer service? Just hundreds and hundreds of students filled this stage. And I was so moved by their prayers. You know, young people have been hungering for God and we're seeing this great outpouring of God's spirit upon this generation. Didn't you love this one young woman, 16 years of age, she prayed, God, I pray that I won't be the 
best version of me. I want to become more like Jesus. How about that, everybody? That's what it's all about. So it's been an incredible, incredible season of prayer. You're surrounded by uh, all these little post-it notes on the wall. There's an online prayer wall as well. And they contain the names of people who are far from God or people who need a miracle. And we've just had miracle after miracle, people reporting answered prayer. I've had so many parents, grandparents tell me that the, the young person that they're praying for, a son, a daughter, a grandchild, that they said, Lord, will you awaken them spiritually, help them come back to you or help them to find you. And we're hearing stories of young people just returning to Christ, just coming and showing up. I need to get to church. And uh, you're going to see some of them be baptized today. We've, we've had um, 70 people were pre-registered to be baptized today before we even invited people to come. And that's incredible because just a month ago, we baptized 103 people, everybody. So this is what revival looks like. It, when God moves, you can't stop it. So uh, today we're going to have an opportunity for some of you who uh, you're going you're to experience this service. Baptism is a symbol of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. And if you're ready to kind of die to yourself and follow Jesus, even if you didn't prepare, we have everything that you need to be baptized and you can join all these people that are being baptized. You can be a part of that. Let me just plant that seed now. You'll hear more of it in the message. But today is a day for those of you who have decided to follow Jesus, to proclaim that publicly. And your whole church is gonna be here just encouraging you and praising you. Aren't you gonna do that, you guys? Aren't you gonna celebrate and cheer them on? All right, so many of you have been coming to Heartland a while. You've heard this number. It's a short code, a text code that the church owns. It's uh, 68,000, all right? So you can text different words to 68,000 and get all this information. So the first word I wanna tell you about is the word story. If you text the word story to 68,000, that's how I get to hear what God has done in your life. I, I asked them, give me a place where you guys could write your testimonies and I could hear them. Last service, one came in where a person was praying to be financially free and all of their student loan debt was paid for in the 21 days of prayer. They said it was a God-sized number. And he says, I'm writing you today to say, praise God, I am financially free. Only God can do that. We've seen people who have prayed for healings in their body. There was a woman who had, uh, they discovered a large mass in her chest. And so she came to the 21 days praying, it's just heavy on her. And then one morning she just felt the release, like just a sense of God has touched her life, went back to the doctor that day. They scanned her 17 times and could not find any trace of that mass. There was a couple that was praying for three 21 day, three 21 day, day cycles of wanting a child. They wanted to adopt and nothing was working. And they came forward and received prayer on Saturday last week. And during the 8.30 service, they got a call from their caseworker and said, the little girl you've been waiting for is here. And it just was answered in just one, less than 24 hours. I know you have a story. So share your story with us. Text the word story to 68,000 and it'll give you a little place to do that. Also, the small groups uh, semester start uh, this week. So if you'd like to be a part of the church, not just attend the church, but actually be part of it, why don't you join a group? There's, there's freedom groups. There's a God owns it all group for those of you who wanna become financially free. And uh, I encourage many of you, if you've never had any biblical instruction on how to order your finances, this would be a great time to go through that. Many of you could actually start a group. You don't have to teach a Bible study. Anything that you love to do or that you're gifted at that you do already, you can turn it into a ministry by doing it with others. So if you'll text the word groups to 68,000, you'll be able to see all the different groups that are available that you could join or instructions on how you can start a group and let us help you to do that. Finally, you heard about this men's breakfast that we're gonna have. I'm so excited about it. It's gonna be here next uh, Friday morning, there's still a few spots left, so text the word MEN to 68,000, and we'll get all that information. Does that seem simple? Like, I mean, can you guys understand? You just change the letters, you just change the word, but 68,000. Okay, no young person's having a problem. I'm talking to you old people, <laughs> like me, all right? But I'm so glad that you are here. Hey, church, it's time for the offering, time for us to give to the Lord. Again. Nothing makes me more proud of being a pastor in a church where people support ministry as well as you do. And God has been great through you. Over the last uh, two months, 
since December and January. Um, your, your response and your giving has been unbelievable. And I wanna say thank you. That giving has increased 60, no, 36, I'll get that right. 36% in two months. Isn't that incredible? I don't know if you are aware of that. That's not normal. If you text the word give to 68,000, go on our website and you will see all the places where your giving goes. So you're not giving to a church, you're giving through a church. And we're touching the lives of people, literally thousands of people, and I mean that no exaggeration, have joined this church in the last year, thousands of people. So that means the needs have gone up. And we're very responsive and we take what you give and we make sure that we help every person that's in need. And so if you'll just, again, if you wanna look and see where that goes locally, nationally, and around the world, you can be part of the offering today. Um, we don't pass an offering plate here. Uh, we figure if you can text GIVE to 68,000, that's all you need. And if you'd like to give a physical offering, there are some offering boxes uh, in the building on your way out, okay? But I'd like to pray for you now, pray over this offering, and then ask you just to focus and get your heart ready to hear God's word. I think, I think God is always speaking. We have a trouble today listening. Our lives are moving at you know, 50,000 RPMs. And if God's speaking in a whisper, you gotta slow your heart to about 50 RPMs and let God talk to you. So let's, let's use this moment right now to get ready. Father, we love you today. We're so glad to be in your house. Thank you for your church. Thank you for your people. Thank you for their generosity. And I pray a special blessing upon them today as they give. Lord, you know how to pour out the windows of heaven on those who put you first. And you're a God who keeps your word and your promises. So we pray, pray that you would bless every giver, bless this offering and multiply it and use it to touch people's lives. And now, Lord, we're opening our hearts to you and we hold nothing back and we're asking you, Holy Spirit, speak to our lives today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I love hearing Pastor John sing, but he has sung for 21 days straight in a row. It's day 22, he's gonna sing again. Y'all better appreciate that. Come on, Pastor John Harris. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. To follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me. Well, good morning, everybody. If we've not met yet, my name is Nick. I'm one of our pastors. I mean, it's such a privilege to get to be with you today, especially on a day like Baptism Sunday, which you've already heard us talk about together. Come on, is there any place better than Sunday on a Baptism Sunday here at Heartland? Yeah. Let me tell you, I feel so privileged to get to be a part of that, especially for all of you who have decided already that today is the day that you physically represent what that song just said going under the water and coming back up, representing a death, burial, and resurrection, saying, God, you have my whole life. 
I recognize my need for you. You can do whatever you want to do with it. You're going to see that today. But what I'm really excited about is that for some of you, you showed up thinking it was going to be another normal Sunday at church, but God has already started working in your heart. And today is the day that you're going to get baptized and that you publicly say, God, you can take my whole life. You see, baptism is such a beautiful representation about what we've been talking about this entire month. We started at the beginning of the month in John chapter 15, verse 5. And I want to take you back there, but real quick, if you're following along at home today, uh, all of the notes and the scriptures and everything we're going to talk about today, you can get that by texting the word notes to 68,000 uh, right now. And if you don't want notes today, then we'll just pray for you and you can figure it out this week uh, on your own. John chapter 15, verse 5, Jesus is speaking and he says this, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me remains close to me, remains connected to me, doesn't just go to church more or go through the growth track. Those are all great things, but those who stay connected to me personally, they'll bear much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Abide in me. Baptism is such a beautiful representation of abiding because it's people coming forward and saying, no, time out. I know who I am. I know who I'm not that I'm the beloved child of the Most High God. It says in Scripture that God blesses those who recognize their need for Him. It's the idea that, God, I'm putting my whole life out in front of you, that, God, you can do whatever you want to do, the cross before me, the entire world behind me. It's what Jesus actually did at the beginning of His ministry. In Matthew chapter 3, Jesus is getting ready to start His ministry, and He's done nothing yet. He's healed nobody. He hasn't divided the fishes yet. He's done nothing. And he goes to John the Baptist and he says, John, I need you to baptize me. And John the Baptist is flabbergasted by this. This is like Michael Jordan looking at you and me and saying, hey, can you teach me how to shoot a three-pointer? Like, can you help me with that? Ridiculous. I don't know nothing about basketball. And so John protests. He says, no, I, I, I can't baptize you. And Jesus goes, no, no, no. It's proper for you to do this right now, to fulfill all righteousness. It's actually proper that I do this because I want the world to know before I do anything where my source is. Do you see this? Where I'm abiding in. And so Jesus is baptized, and it says this in Matthew chapter 3. It says, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were open to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. Don't miss this. It's like the Spirit of God came down and filled Jesus in this moment. I'll tell you this right now. You're going to see this on display today when people get in these tanks. They're going to go under the water, and I can't explain it to you, but they're going to come up, and it's like the lightness and the freedom of God. I just feel like I'm so in tune with your spirit right now, and I'm honoring you with what I want to do. It's so humble to do that. He goes under the water, and when he comes up, look, a voice from heaven came and said, this is my beloved son, in whom I love, and I'm well pleased. Do you see the identification in this. That Jesus humbly, at the very beginning of his ministry, steps into the waters, and as he's baptized and he comes up, God looks at him and says, nobody get it twisted. That's my kid. I love him. And not only do I love him, not only is he beloved by me, I am well pleased with him. Amen. Notice the order of events. You've done nothing yet, and you're my beloved son. You've accomplished zero. Jesus. And I love you and I'm well pleased in you. I see some vacant stairs. Let me give you an example of what this uh, looks like. I've got two little boys in my house right now. I've got a three-year-old named Graham and I've got a one-year-old named Mac. These are my little boys uh, right here at Halloween. The Buzz Lightyear costumes not come off in case you want to know. <laughs> it's January and we're still batting a thousand on the Buzz Lightyear costume. <laughs> Amazing little boys. I love them to death. Here's what I know to be true about them, that right now they're little, but someday they're going to grow up. Someday they're going to assume new titles. Like someday, God willing, they will grow up and they will become parents themselves and they'll have kids of their own. God willing, they will be contributing members of society. We're praying for the youngest that that would be true right now. He's either going to change the world or burn it down. It's one of the two. There's no in between. And here's the crazy thing about this. 
They're going to get all these new titles, but the one title that will remain true, no matter where they go, no matter what they do, is that their dad is Nick. Their dad is Nick. Like, it is Graham, son of Nick. It's Mac, son of Abby. Like, they can go anywhere, do whatever they want to do. They may decide, I don't want Nick to be my dad anymore. Actually, I want Pastor John to be my dad because he sings really well. I want him to be my dad. My dad sounds like a donkey. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. And he can't change it. He's still always going to be my kid. Like, he'll always be mine. And you know what's crazy about this? Parents, you get this, and you don't really understand it until you become a parent, where you're like, okay, and you know what's nuts? None of their performance dictates my love for them. Now, don't get it twisted. They're a bunch of meat rocks, okay? They, they get in trouble all the time. They wail on each other. They do stuff where you're like, I'm out of my mind right now. And there's never been a day where I've not loved them. My oldest, Graham, the other day looked at me and said, Dad, you remember when I was a baby? I was like, you mean like yesterday? Yes, I, I told him, I said, I not only remember when you were a baby, I actually was there the day you were born. And it's so crazy. I watched you take your first breath. Like, it's just crazy. Like, literally, he was not breathing in the womb, and then he just starts breathing. Like, I saw that moment when that happened. I've known you your whole life. Friends, the voice of your heavenly father to you today is this. You are my beloved child. And whether you believe that or not, notice this, that doesn't determine if you are his child or not. He sees you as that. Come on, the same voice that tells Jesus, I delight in you and I'm pleased with you, is the same voice that God is speaking over you today. So the question that every single person is going to have to grapple with and answer in their life is this big question, who am I? And I'm here to tell you this morning that before anything else can be said about you, the only true and appropriate response, whether you feel it or not, is this. I am the beloved child of God. That I am. That he's known me since before I was born. He knows the numbers of hair on my head. And so today I want to try something. Actually, I think this is good for us to do this. I'm going to ask you a question. Who are you? And I want you to actually say out loud, I am the beloved child of God. Can we do this? Okay. Who are you? Okay, do you feel how monotone that was as we just did that? I anticipated that response because here, here, here's the truth. I think many of us, if we were deeply honest, we, we, we know that, but we don't believe that. Like I know that, I've gone to church, I've been through a freedom group, I understand that, and I still don't believe that I'm the child of God. Like I don't feel that. And if you feel that way, can I tell you, you're not alone. Because can I just tell you, the same voice of the enemy that comes after Jesus is still alive and active today. What have we been learning about in this series? There's a still small voice that is louder and more true than any other voice out there. And yet it gets drowned out by other places that are coming for your identity. So Jesus, not even nine verses later, God has opened up heaven and said, that's my son who I love and I'm well pleased in. Nine verses later, the devil, the tempter, comes to Jesus and he says this, if you are the son of God, come on, didn't his dad just tell him who he is just a few minutes ago? But if you are the son of God, turn these stones into bread. A lot of people think that the temptation here is trying to get Jesus to break his ketogenic diet. This ain't that. Jesus is pro-carbs, Okay. No, it's an assault on Jesus' identity of who he is. If you are the son of God, then prove it. If you are the son of God, do something spectacular so people will say something good about you. If you are the son of God, then man, you better have the approval of it. You see what I'm saying? Underneath it, we've been talking about this, and I'm not going to belabor it today, but there's a great lie that's coming for you and me when it comes to the source of our identity, and it's this. Henry Nouwen talks about this. It's that I am what I do. Or I am what others say. Or I am what I have. And can I tell you, the undercurrent of all three of those is this. Prove it. Prove that you're good enough. Prove that you have what it takes to get it done. Prove that you are what other people say about you. Prove that you've accumulated enough stuff. I don't know about you. When I wake up in the morning, I have the words prove it like tattooed inside my eyelids. Wake up. Let's go. Come on. What are we going to do today? What are we going to accomplish what are we going to get people to say about us? And the problem with this, and you know this, we've talked about this at great length, is this, is that if my identity is in any of this, come on, it's shaky. That if my identity is in what I do, I'll never be able to do enough. 
If it's in what other people say, come on, the court of popular opinion is fickle and it's lonely. And if it's in what I have, can I tell you, you will never have enough to satisfy your soul. You will never, and, and let's notice, take my word for it. I, I promise you this. If we would just open our eyes to this great lie, Tim Keller talks about this idea that there, there's all these portrayals of the devil in demonic activity. And some of them are very real. And you see it in movies where people are demon possessed. Those are all rear guard attacks. Front guard attacks are the scary ones that come underneath the surface that I live my whole life not knowing that this is what's happening to me. So I live my life for the approval of others or trying to get enough or do enough. And you know what's so crazy? There's this belief that, well, that's what culture is trying to impress upon us. And that's partially true. But open your eyes. Culture is telling us that that's a lie too. Um, let me illustrate it this way. Post Malone. Some of you know him. Yes, you've heard his music. Some of you are like, I'm a church. I can't admit to listen to Post Malone. <laughs> well, you're all a bunch of liars and you have. And I know you have. Because he hits, man. It's good. Okay, so Post Malone. <laughs> wrote a song, he's one of the most successful artists of our decade, writes this song, and in it he says this, he said, all the stunting couldn't satisfy my soul. Real quick, stunting, if you don't know what that means, find a teenager, this is a safe place, we can learn together in proximity. All this achieving, all this trying to get all this stuff, it couldn't satisfy my soul. I got a hundred big houses and I still feel alone. The number 20 song on the iTunes charts today, you know what it is? It's a song by Billie Eilish called, What Was I Made For? Y'all know that song? Yeah, I know you know that song. I won't ask this side of the road. I know y'all know that. You know it because it's actually pretty catchy. It hits you, man. It's good. The title of that song is not, I guess this is what I was made for. What is it? No, I chased it. And I went after it. And I got everything I thought I wanted. And I still don't know what I was made for. Do you see this? Culture is screaming this at you. Saying it's still a lie. And it's still not fulfilling what you thought it would. And I promise you this, this isn't just non-Christians, this is Christians as well too. I don't have time to belabor this today, but there's a stream of Christianity that would tell you, you never say it out loud, but you would say, hey, I'm so grateful that Jesus died for my sins, but now I've got to prove that I'm worth him dying for me. And so I'm going to do a bunch of activity trying to right the wrongs that I've done in my life. And Jesus is like, dude, I already proved it for you. Like I already came for you. I already did that. In fact, for some of us, we're living out of those three right now. And I would venture, and I hope this gets in your space a little bit today, that you might be holding an unbiblically low view of how much God loves you, how much he cares about you. The Apostle Paul, he writes about this in Ephesians, the love of God for you. And I think if he was here in the room, he'd grab you by the shoulders and he'd shake you till you believe it. Go read Paul. He would do it. And he says this in Ephesians chapter 2. He says this, God is so rich in mercy. Come on, let these words fall over you. God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, Nick explained that, dead because of our sins, even when you thought you could run your life better than God, even when I was in the driver's seat, while I was a long way off, he gave us life. There's nothing I did, he gave. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. God's a giver, he gave that before I was ready to receive him and he raised Christ from the dead. It's only by God's grace that you have been saved, not by anything that you've done. Think about that. He continues on and he says this, God saved you by his grace when you what? When you, when you did enough, when you finally did that you version Bible for the whole year. Way to go, man, that's, no, 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 no. When you believed, when you believed, when you humbly came before God, said, God, I recognize my need for you. I'm so broken, I'm done faking this. God, I need you. What does it say? It says that he saved you by his grace when you do that. And it's a gift that you can't take credit for. Salvation is not a reward for the good things that we've done. <laughs> so no one can boast about this. Can I tell you, the gospel of Jesus is so offensive to people that are not humble. Because the humble can receive this. They go, yeah, I get it. I can't boast. And then I couldn't do it on my own. The church people that would say, no, in all actually, like, you know, I teach Bible study, right? Like, you know, I, yo, some of you went to church with that guy. You know, I, I taught Bible study. I've been around forever. I got to save the youth. You know, all that. You, you know these people. You remember the older son and the prodigal son? He's all huffing and puffing because the younger son's back. What does he say to him? He says, oh, don't get it twisted. You've always been with me and everything I have is yours. Translation, if you think that your standing as my son is based upon what you're doing for me, oh, you got it so backwards. I love how Dr. Ivan said it. 
in the 21 days of prayer, he said, the ground is level at the foot of the cross. You know what that means? That means this, that when I see you, I actually don't see the good or the bad you do. I see you as my beloved child. And I wish you'd see yourself that way too. What have we been talking about this whole last year? Who you are becoming more important than what you're doing. So what, I can go do whatever I want? No, 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 no. What he's saying is, I see the process that you're on and I can look ahead to your future and I see the person that you are becoming. And come on, if you would abide in me and get close to me, stop focusing on external behavior and just get close and watch as I change the desires of your heart. Do you see this? Watch how he concludes this. And I hope if you don't hear anything else today, you hear this. He says this, for we are God's masterpiece. You are God's masterpiece. I'm God's masterpiece. In the world we live in today where content is just being poured out daily, there's new music, new art, new everything coming out. We don't think about masterpiece a lot, we think about what's coming next. Listen, an artist will spend their whole life working for a masterpiece. They'll produce thousands of paintings and books and songs and, and all these things to get the one where they go, oh, that's the masterpiece right there, I created that. And when God looks at you, he sees that. Do you see yourself that way? God sees you that way. You are God's masterpiece. Jacob Dodd, you are God's masterpiece. And you can put your head down and not look at me, but I'm telling you right now, you are God's masterpiece. And dude, he's known you since before you were born. And he's known you when you're like, dude, I'm killing it right now. And he's known you when you've ashamed of yourself. And he still loves you. And you're still his masterpiece. He spent time on you. It says it right there. I'm looking up at it. So you can do the good things he planned for you a long time ago. God's got so much ahead of you. And you know what's amazing? It has nothing to do with what you're doing, but it's who you are. O'Neal girls, he feels the same way about you. I could walk around this room and talk to every single person here. Aaron, you are the beloved child of the most high God. He loves you. He sees you. He knows you. Jennifer, you are the beloved daughter of the most high God. He cares about you. Mike, I've known you for two years. I can't even pronounce your last name. It's so hard. I, I wish I could. I can't do it. You know what's amazing? God knows how to say your last name. <laughs> and he's known you your whole life. And man, he knows how good of a dad you are and how good of a small group leader you are and how good of a beloved child of his you are. And I hope you never forget it. I'm telling you right now, stop trying so hard. Just become the beloved child of God. Abide in me, get close to me. Come, come learn the unforced rhythms of grace because there's, there's some in here, you would sit here and you go, that sounds great, but I still don't believe it. I'm so tired of just trying. If that's you, just listen to the words of Jesus, what he wants to say to you today. He says this, he says, are you tired? Yeah, Jesus, I'm tired. You tired of trying to prove it and make it happen under your own might? Yeah. Are you worn out, burned out on religion? Yeah, God, you know it. Then come to me. Just abide in me and get close to me. Come on, get close. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to have a real rest. Praise God somebody for that. that I'll teach you. You know what this looks like? It looks like when I wake up in the morning, I am secure in the fact that I am the beloved son of the most high God. That before I even woke up, his mercy and goodness were chasing after me all the days of my life. That God, you're with me and you're for me and you delight in me. Look at this last one. Keep company with me. Stay close. Come on, stay connected to the right source. And watch as you learn how to live freely and lightly. Free and light. I think for some of you, if you could pick two words for your life right now, you'd say, I need to feel free and I need to feel light. Can I tell you, coming close to God is as simple as going, God, I need you. And today you're gonna watch people, I'm telling you, you're gonna watch people by the dozens get in this tank saying the cross before me, the world behind me, I'm living in the freedom of what God's done for me. I don't have to prove nothing to nobody. He proved it for me. And there's others of you that you would sit here and you go, man, if that's true, Nick, I need that. Can I tell you, you didn't know you were gonna get baptized today, but God knew you were gonna get baptized today. It's not an accident that you're here. You didn't know you were gonna get baptized today. We knew you were gonna get baptized today. And so we've planned accordingly and come up with an excuse. We got everything that you could possibly need. We got shirts and Nick, I don't have any uh, shorts. We got shorts too. Nick, I only brought one pair of underwear. Praise God, we got underwear for you. We got all kinds of stuff, whatever you need. 
But Nick, my hair, like if it gets wet, it just, it just is some type of way. Can I tell you, we got every, our, our team has prepped so thoroughly for you. And let me go one step further. If you really were able to grasp and believe the depth and the magnitude that God is proud of you and he loves you, who cares about your hair? Come on. I need that. I don't know about you. I need that in my life. I'm the beloved child of the most high God. And in just a moment, I want to invite some people to come forward and be baptized. To say the cross before me, the world behind me. But before we do that, I want to pray for someone in this room who I know is sitting here and you say, I feel so tired. I feel like I've been working and working and working. If that's you, come on, I want to pray for you. Father God, I love you and I thank you for my brothers and sisters. God, you see their pain. God, you see their needs. But God, more importantly, you see them as your beloved children. And so God, I want to lift up anybody in here that would say, I feel so far from God and I need him. Come on, if that's you and you say, Nick, I need God, just say these words with me. Just pray this to God out of the sincereness of your heart. Just say this, say, Jesus, I need you. Lord, I'm sorry for doing things my own way and for holding you at a distance. But I believe you died for me so that I could live. Come on, if that's you and you're praying this prayer, you say, Nick, I'm praying right along with you. Just raise your hand across this room. I want to pray with you right now. Yeah, all over the place. Yep, in the back top. Come on, God's moving in this place right now. Don't miss this. Come on, if that's you and you get your hand up, say these words with me. Say this. Say, Jesus, I give you my life. Would you come in and change me? Help me to never be the same. Father God, I praise you for every person that just prayed that prayer. God, they are your beloved children, and I pray they would feel that right now more than they've ever felt it in their entire life. God, would you draw close to them and give them the courage to take the next step that you're calling them to. Father, we love you, we praise you, we worship you, and we honor you. What a privilege to praise you. It's in Jesus' name that we all said together, amen. Amen, amen. Come on, let's congratulate everybody that made that decision. That's amazing. And so church, you're going to see it right now. You're going to see people get baptized. And for some of you, it's your day and you knew it. Others of you, you had no clue. Some of you, let me tell you, we all play a part in today because some of you have been baptized before and you remember the moment where the Holy Spirit delighted on you. And come on, that's going to take you right back to the moment. You're going to go, oh my gosh, that's life change that's happening in front of me right now. So here's what I want to do. I want to invite us all to stand to our feet. And if today is your day to be baptized, here's what I want to say to you. Just come. Just come. Come as you are right now. Our team's waiting. We're prepped and we're ready for you. Church, are we ready? Let's try that again. Church, are we ready? All right, three, two, one. Come on down and come meet me. We're going to go right out this door. to hide the spirit soul this bag of bones yeah yeah I try with all my mind yeah. but I just can't win the fire I'm slowly drifting oh bag of mine yeah
One second. We're not gonna let him baptize him without you getting a picture, I promise. In fact, listen to this. We have so many great teams here at Heartland. We got the world's best videographers, photographers, everything. If you got a loved one that's getting baptized, I promise you, we'll get all their pictures professionally done. We got the video that's gonna come to them tomorrow, just so you can enjoy the moment right now. Come on, there's nothing sweeter than being in the presence of life change right now, right? And here's what I wanna say. On days like today, we purposefully teach a little bit less. And we purposely sing a few less songs at the beginning because we know the Spirit of God works in this place. And hey, come on, he's working right now, isn't he? And so for someone, I wanna appeal again. I don't know where you're sitting, but you may be sitting up high or down low, but the Holy Spirit's been tugging at you going, come on, dude, today's your day. Come on, sister, today's your day. And if that's you, come on, we got nothing but time. We've got everything that you need. Come forward just as you are. Come meet my dad right over here. Come and be baptized. Come on, let's celebrate some baptisms together. Let's go.
I mean, come on, is there anything better than this? Come on, watching people take this step, it's amazing. Here's what I know, we still got quite a few people back there that are changing to be baptized. Some of y'all need to go get your kids though, okay? <laughs> so here's what I wanna do, I'm gonna pray for us and bless you before you go, but stick around as long as you can. We'll baptize, like I said, we have nothing but time today. So if you're still sitting here going, man, I need to be baptized, come today. But Father God, I thank you for your church. God, I thank you that it's your church. And God, I thank you for your people. God, I thank you for the people that have made decisions to follow you, no turning back. God, I pray that today you would bless these people, God. Lord, you'd keep them. God, you'd cause your face to shine upon them. God, give them grace. Help them to see you as working in their life. We love you, Father. We praise you. It's in Jesus' name that we all said together, amen. Amen, come on, let's baptize. Christ is my firm foundation. I stand when everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus.
You know, um, God's not done. Man just walked up and says, is it too late to be baptized? I said, it's never too late. It's never too late. If you're still hanging around wondering if it's too late, it's not too late. You can still be baptized. There's still people still coming and um, just so touched right now. You see all the different ages, everybody? Do you see how God speaks to little children and he talks to 80-year-olds? Do you know how difficult it is to be baptized at 80 plus. Y'all just witnessed some miracles here already. So come on, give God praise uh, for what you're seeing. It's a work of God. Only God can do it. And there's still some more people from every place, race, tongue, nation. This is the will of Jesus right here. Come on, let's give him praise. Come on, let's sing some more. I trust in God, my Savior, the one. And if you'd still like to be baptized, come on up, I'll meet you. Stop. 
Tell me, they tell me there's just one more coming. You guys want to hang out for just one more? Yeah. All right, I'll tell you a couple stories. One of these young men that was baptized, he's uh, an Israeli national. He served in the IDF. He gave his life to Christ when he watched the show, The Chosen. Y'all know that show? Season two, right in the middle of that season, it dawned on him who Jesus was, and he came to church, and he's been here, and uh, over the 21 days of prayer, uh, we had a pastor from Jerusalem come, and he was here, y'all remember that? And uh, that pastor, it was able to just share with him. It's amazing how God will send someone across an ocean to say just the right words to help somebody take the next step. And he has an entire family were baptized this morning. It's just incredible. So that's an amazing story. I think God just designed and orchestrated that. I talked to an 80 year old gentleman over here who said, they sent me to hospice and then you all prayed for me at the 21 days and I'm keep getting better and I feel strong today. And so I decided to come and uh, no one can explain it. And I, I looked at him and I says, well, then you still got purpose. Your life's not done. And I just prayed over him. I said, the devil's not gonna rob one day of the life that God has intended for you to live on this earth. All right, we got him here. Church, love you so much. So glad you came. Go and be blessed. Have an incredible week. And I can't wait to see you next time. Keep coming back. We love you. God bless you.